my name's James Long. Uh, you can call me Jay. Everyone does. I spent 10 years in the Marine Corps. I uh, went in right after high school. I was in the infantry. I uh, deployed twice with them. Uh, while I was in, I got my degree in wildlife biology. Uh, after I was medically retired out of the Marine Corps, I went to work for Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. I worked at uh, Guadalupe River State Park and Lake Somerville State Park. I ran their drawn hunts. I did natural resource work. And at Lake Somerville, I managed their trailway and their public hunting land. I did that for almost five years uh, before I started working for Texas A&M NRI. Uh, doing this feral hog work. Um, while, I've, while I'm doing this, I'm also uh, pursuing my master's in wildlife biology. So I'm, I'm a little on the younger side, but I've been around, I've been doing this work for a while, and uh, I've, I've been able to gain some insight going all over the world. Uh, and I appreciate you all coming here today and uh, listening to us talk. So today we're going to talk to you about the Feral Swine Control Pilot Program. Hopefully after today we can get some more of you signed up and help uh, put a dent in the population here in the county. So today we're going to cover distribution and damage, uh, biology and environmental impact. We're going to cover some laws around uh, feral hogs, the take and the transportation of them. Uh, we're going to talk about some reduction methods and then we're going to get into the project background behind the trap loan program. Uh, we're going to look at the coordinated efforts and the monitoring and then I also have some success metrics uh, for the counties uh, in the phase one program. So to start off, we're going to look at uh, distribution. So this map is the feral swine population from 1982 by county. As you can see, it's mostly in the west and southern part of the U.S. Over here, nearly 40 years later, uh, the feral swine populations in 2021 by county, th this has grown exponentially. It has covered everything up and it slowly moved north. Out west, it's slowly moving east. And funny enough, Texas reports only one county out there in the far west without feral hogs. Now, I don't know about any of you guys, I've never met a feral hog that can tell a county line. Uh, so I don't know how they determine that, that that little area out there is hog free, especially since most of the counties around it have hogs in it. Uh, but I guess we'll take their word for it. So as we're talking, uh, this is just a blown up map of the Texas distribution. As I was saying, as of 2019, 99% of Texas counties have wild pigs in them. And as you can see, that's a pretty uh, large increase from 1982. All right, so livestock or wildlife? Is, has anyone, do, do, everyone here probably thinks of wild pigs as wildlife out on the, uh, out on your property, right? But we define it as livestock. It is the property of the landowner, unlike deer or other, na other wildlife like that, which is the property of the state. So what you do with the wild pigs is up to you. You catch them, you can sell them, you can dispatch them there on your property. They're, they are classified as the same thing as wild, ca wild cattle or wild goats. And that's important when it comes to reducing their numbers. Agricultural damage. So we're going to get into the damage that they've done and the damage that they do across the landscape. Has anyone here heard the 52 million number? It's a, it's a very popular number for years and years that wild pigs did $52 million worth of damage annually to uh, agricultural and livestock. That number has changed and it has increased dramatically. According to new studies, the total agricultural damages are greater than 100 million annually. And annual wild pig damages in Texas are conservatively estimated around $230 million. Now that, does, that number does not include uh, when you like hit a wild pig going down the road and the damage it does to your vehicle and insurance damages and stuff like that. And then landowners spend right around $7 million annually on wild pig control and damage mitigation here in Texas. So that's the trapping of wild pigs, the dispatching of wild pigs, that's fixing the damage they've done to your property, 
Um, that's changing practices because of wild pigs. That number sits at around 7 million. Now, there's a belief that that number could be much higher, uh, especially as, as products continue to rise in price. Uh, but that's the number we've um, kind of uh, agreed to at, at this point. And one big problem with this number, though, that I always like to bring up is oftentimes this number is lower because landowners don't put two and two together with how much they're actually spending because of the damage that wild pigs have done. So they might say, well, I lost $5,000 worth of crop this year, but they don't talk about the money it spent to clear that crop out, the money it spent to fix the field, the gas that went in, the gas or diesel that went into your implements, um, the time, your own time spent doing it. And so that dramatically lowers what that number could actually be. All of that is hog damage. And it does not take very long, long for them to get into a field and do that. And sadly, if you're just driving by, you might not be able to see that damage at first. This is one of my favorite videos to watch how they'll tear apart the round bales like that. And that's kind of where I get back to, you know, a landowner might see that and might think of how much that round bale cost them, but they don't take into account how much it costs them to make that round bale, run the implements, uh, the um, twine used to tie it together, uh, the diesel fuel it took to get it out onto your field, and all of that that actually went into the loss of that round bale. Has anyone ever hit a pig? It's surprising how much damage they'll do too. And that's another area where we do a, a bad job of keeping records of how much damage is actually done, uh, just like when you hit a deer going down the road. All right, so now we're gonna get into a little bit of their biology and why they've become such a problem. Population boom. So as you saw from the distribution map, in that 40 years, they went from covering a little less than half of the state to covering basically the whole state. Well, how does that happen so fast? Part of it is because they reach maturity so quickly. Females, as soon as it's been documented that females as soon as six months can have a litter of piglets. Now, that's kind of an extreme number. We normally lean to a year. A year, a year for females and a year for males is when you'll start seeing them reproduce. But they do have a short gestation, only 115 days. That means that they can have two, maybe three uh, litters a year if they're, if they're really pushing it. No defined mating season. They have few predators. I mean, think about it. We've done a pretty good job as uh, humans out on uh, the landscape of getting rid of anything naturally that could predate on pigs. We, we destroyed the wolf population. We've taken care of mountain lions. We were constantly shooting coyotes. Anything that could predate on pigs or piglets we're, we're kind of what's left. And so if we're not out there taking care of them, they're just gonna to continue to be allowed to boom. And they have easy access to feed meant for wildlife and livestock. Who all here hunts? How many times have you gone up to your feeder and there's been pigs eating the corn that you bought for the deer? That's, that's free food for them. They don't have to fight for it. They don't have to scavenge for it. They don't have to root around for it. They're just filling their belly off the money you put on the ground. And all that leads to bigger and healthier pigs that could have more babies going down the road. And the one thing they all have in common, and one of the big reasons why they are such a problem across the US and here in Texas specifically, is because they all need water. 